Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. In this video, we're going to explore the stages of attachment identified by Schaefer. In the first year of life, psychologists suggest that attachments are formed between a parent and their child. But how does this begin and how does it develop? Are there certain stages we all go through in order to form an attachment? Well, according to Rudolf Schaefer and Peggy Emerson, there are four stages. In their research, they observed a sample of 60 infants from working class families in Glasgow and recorded their attachment behaviours at regular intervals between the ages of 6 weeks and 18 months, making it a longitudinal study. They visited the families every 4 weeks until they were 1 and then once again at 18 months. During each visit, the researchers asked the infant's primary caregiver, usually the mother, a series of questions about the child's attachment behaviours, such as who they preferred to be with, who they turned to for comfort, and how they reacted when separated from their caregiver. Thus, attachment was measured in two ways. Firstly, separation anxiety. If the baby showed anxiety or distress when the caregiver left them, then it indicated that an attachment had been formed. And secondly, stranger distress. If the baby showed signs of distress when approached by someone they did not know, this shows that the baby can recognize familiar people and feel anxious with those who are unfamiliar. They found that at 25 to 32 weeks of age, approximately six to eight months, 50% of the babies showed signs of separation anxiety. Also, the attachment tended to be to the caregiver who was most interactive and sensitive to the infant's behaviours and facial expressions, and not simply the person who spent the most time with them. At around 40 weeks, approximately 10 months, 80% of the babies had a specific attachment, with 30% having multiple attachments. Based on their observations, Schaefer and Emerson identified four distinct stages of attachment. Firstly, the asocial stage at 0 to 6 weeks. In calling this stage asocial, it does not mean that the baby is not social at all. In this stage, the infant can form bonds with anyone, but this does include inanimate objects such as blankets or toys, as well as humans. For example, a baby may smile and coo where anyone who picks them up and speaks to them, whether it's their parent or a stranger, as well as when given a teddy bear. Secondly, indiscriminate attachment at 6 weeks to 7 months. During this stage, infants begin to develop a preference for human company and are more likely to seek social interaction with familiar adults. They are relatively indiscriminate in their attachment behaviours and will still respond positively to strangers who show them attention. For example, a baby may reach out to be picked up by anyone they recognise, such as a grandparent or a babysitter. Thirdly, discriminate or specific attachment at seven to nine months. This is the stage when infants begin to form strong bonds with specific individuals, usually their primary caregivers. They will actively seek out their attachment figures when they are upset or distressed and may become anxious or upset when they are separated from them. In other words, they show separation and stranger anxiety. For example, a baby may cry and cling to their mother when she tries to leave the room or if a stranger tries to play with them. And fourthly, multiple attachment at approximately 10 months going on to 18 months. In this stage, infants begin to form attachments with multiple individuals, including grandparents, siblings, and other close family members or caregivers. They are more able to tolerate brief separations from their primary caregiver, but they still rely on them for emotional support and comfort. For example, a baby may happily interact with a grandparent or older sibling who they see regularly, but they may still become upset if they are away from their mother or father for too long. So now let's critically consider Schaefer's stages of attachment. One of the strengths of Schaefer and Emerson's research relates to ecological validity. One of the main problems that often comes with observational research is that they are observed in some highly controlled laboratory setting where the behaviour of the participants changes because they are in a different setting than normal and they know they're being observed. However, because the observations of the families took place in their own homes, this means their behaviours were in a natural setting are more likely to be reflective of their everyday behaviour. Behaviors. However, one of the limitations of the research relates to their use of self-reports. This is because the stages are based on observations and self-report data from the caregivers rather than the researchers, which may be subject to interpretation and possible socially desirable answers. For example, caregivers may be more likely to overestimate the importance of their own role in attachment development. Another criticism with the research relates to their sample. This is because the children and their carers involved in the study were from the same area and the same social class. 
a parent who lives in a different part of the city or in a different part of the country may raise their child in a very different way and have different opportunities available to them in terms of the time they spend with their child as well as the help and support from family and friends. As a result, they may not be a very representative sample to other families, which limits the extent to which the findings about stages of attachment can be generalised to other people. A final criticism of Schaefer's stages of attachment is that it may not be applicable to all cultures. Their study was conducted with infants from working class families in Glasgow, Scotland, and it is possible that different patterns of attachment may emerge in other cultural contexts. For example, some studies have found that in some cultures, multiple caregivers are the norm, which leads to multiple attachments not being the last stage once the child is around 10 months old, but rather right from the beginning. Therefore, it could be argued that Schaefer's stages of attachment are limited to a particular cultural context. So, now we know something of how a child comes to form an attachment with their caregiver. But where does this leave fathers, especially when the mother is so often the primary caregiver? Are they just left to play a bit part role on the side? In this next video, which you can click on the screen now, we're going to explore the role of the father. I hope you found this video helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.